Yesterday, 343 Industries posted their August development update on Halo Infinite. They spent some time talking about the feedback they received on the public flight, bringing up some old, dead memes, and multiplayer split-screen coming to all versions except PC on release. And we just want to reassure people that although we didn't have split-screen multiplayer in the tech preview, we will absolutely be shipping that day one for launch on all Xbox family devices. Before moving on to the big news everyone took away from the video, co-op campaign and Forge being cut from Infinite's launch. Um, unfortunately, as we focused the team for shutdown and really focused on a quality experience for launch, we made the really tough decision to delay shipping campaign co-op for launch. And we also made the tough call to delay shipping Forge past launch as well. As Halo Infinite still doesn't have a release date at the time of this video, there's no way of knowing when exactly these features will get re-implemented. However, Joseph Staten informs us that they'll return as part of their seasonal updates, with co-op campaign releasing alongside Season 2, and Forge with Season 3, with a brief description of how the game's season roadmap will work. What kind of timing should we be thinking about in terms of co-op and Forge coming to Halo Infinite? What we're targeting is to ship campaign co-op uh, in Season 2, and then we're targeting to ship Forge in Season 3. A season is about three months. That's our goal, is to ship a season every three months. So when it comes to campaign co-op, our target is to ship co-op in season two, about three months after launch, and then our goal is to ship Forge in season three, which would be about six months after launch. Naturally, this surprised and upset quite a few people. Not having two of Halo's staple features in your game until half a year after launch was something Halo 5 Guardians was critiqued for, and that game only took two months to launch Forge, not six. Uh, a brief aside to something else to keep in mind, because I saw comments for it online, neither campaign co-op split-screen or online through Xbox Live will be releasing at launch. Joseph was very particular in the way he was wording the differences between the two in this video. Split-screen, right? I mean, playing Halo competitive multiplayer on a couch with your family and friends, split-screen has always been a super core part of the Halo experience. And we just want to reassure people that although we didn't have split-screen multiplayer in the tech preview, we will absolutely be shipping that day one for launch on all Xbox family devices. And I just had a ton of fun, and it reminded me just how essential that experience of playing campaign together with your family and friends, whether networked or split-screen, really is. Um, unfortunately, as we focused the team for shutdown and really focused on a quality experience for launch, we made the really tough decision to delay shipping campaign co-op for launch. So why announce this now? Even if 343 knows they'll get some backlash from the move. Well, reason one, transparency. It's actually pretty refreshing for a developer to just come out and tell people what not to expect from a game at launch. Especially in an industry plagued with overpromising and under-delivering. By the... Remember, the media lies. Tempering people's expectations will, hopefully, have them avoid the pitfalls games like Cyberpunk 2077 and No Man's Sky did at release, and Halo Infinite's multiplayer being free should soften that blow too. In the development update video, they mentioned that since they want the game to launch with as high a quality as possible, things like Campaign Co-op and Forge just aren't ready to meet those standards. What is our number one priority? Well, our number one priority is making sure that whatever we ship, whenever we ship it, it meets the right quality bar. Um, across all platforms, Xbox devices, PC, and all its different configurations. And when we looked at these two experiences, Campaign Co-op and Forge, we made the determination they're just not ready. Notice how he mentions quality across all platforms. Remember that Infinite isn't just coming to current-gen consoles and PC. It's also launching on the original Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X, as many people waiting to play Halo Infinite aren't even going to own a Series S or an X yet. This leads into reason number two for the announcement, console parity. Let's not forget, the original Xbox One came out in 2013, almost a decade ago. Let's also not forget the cuts and sacrifices made to get Halo 5 Guardians running at a stable 60 FPS on the same console. From resolution scaling, animations getting choppier when the action gets busy, and notably, no split screen at all. 343 themselves described that in particular as a difficult decision to make. In order to adjust for the game's bigger scale, better AI, and overall fidelity, split-screen had to go. It at least makes sense, unlike 
Phil Spencer's excuse, who just said that people are too busy to play couch co-op games with friends, and that you should really just buy another Xbox One, silly. Head of 343 Industries, Bonnie Ross, even talked about how disappointing cutting split screen was for the community at DICE 2017. We fell down with the multiplayer launch of MCC, or when we didn't put split screen in with Halo 5. I think it's incredibly painful for the community and for us. You know, I think and it erodes trust with the community as the community is part of our world building. A lot of learnings from that, um, and I would say for any FPS going out forward, we will always have split screen in going forward. So not only is split screen coming to Halo Infinite, we even know it's supposed to be two player split screen for campaign. All of this, again, for a console that couldn't do it for the previous entry of the same series on the same console, along with crossplay with the newer systems and PC. The struggle on the eight year old box has to be astounding. So what makes the most sense to delay at launch while they tweak it to work better? The two modes that would push the console the most, co-op and forge. Suddenly it's less surprising that they've been cut from launch. Of course, some people are insisting 343 should just delay the game again until these things are ready to ship alongside it. That can't happen because of reason number three. Come hell or high water, Halo Infinite is launching this year. In the dev update, both Joseph and Brian stress the commitment to Infinite launching this holiday. But I did want to just reconfirm, and as we heard Phil Spencer, I think he, he made a reference recently, like this game is definitely, we're committed to releasing this holiday. Yes. And we're pretty close, I think, to, to we're just working through some details right now on kind of what that real date is, right? Yes, that is absolutely correct. We are 100% committed to releasing this holiday, both campaign and our first season of free-to-play multiplayer. November 10th, 2020 was the initial release date of the game, alongside the Xbox Series, uh, series of consoles. Before that, multiple things strained 343 from even attempting to get it out then. A certain global pandemic and the response to the gameplay reveal first and foremost come to mind. Naturally, the game gets delayed. And now, with an extra year plus a month to get the game out the door, 343 has made multiple improvements to the graphical fidelity and taking feedback from last month's flight. And as of this month, the game has now entered shutdown mode, which essentially means the team is now solely focused on fixing bugs and making sure what does launch exceeds their quality expectations. With Halo Infinite due to be out in three to four months, cutting modes so that the team can focus on the solo campaign and multiplayer content makes sense. Whether it's pressured by Microsoft to guarantee a 2021 release date remains to be seen, but it's easy to speculate that after six years in development, they'd want to get the game out the door ASAP. And since Infinite is billing itself as a live service game, they now have the perfect excuse to shift content to later on in the game's life cycle. None of what I've said in this video is to condemn or forgive 343's actions when it comes to Halo Infinite. All I've wanted to do is just try to explain the reasons for co-op and Forge being cut in a rational manner that makes the most sense to me. Of course, if you do have any thoughts or critiques on the video, please let me know. I mainly just made this to air out my complete thoughts on the whole situation, and I've been trying to work to get fully edited content back out onto this channel again. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, as always, take care.